Well, hi, everyone out there. Thank you for joining Love at First Laugh, the Green Room Edition. And today, my friend Marlene Sharp is back. And she was she's going to give us the tea. She's going to spill the tea on all things film festivals. She was a panelist in Comic-Con. She's a finalist of, at one of the most prestigious film festivals in the country, the Austin Film Festival. And let me tell you, she's amazing. She, You can ask her any questions. You can interact with us. We want to hear from you. And please welcome my dear friend, Marlene Sharp. Hi. Hi, Hi Marlene. Grace. Hi, Grace. Oh, How boy, are I'm, you? I'm good. I'm good. And we're going to get questions today? I hope so. That would oh, be awesome. Yeah. Oh, okay. Great, great, great. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. This is I exciting. Know. Our viewers are great. They have tons of questions and they interact with us. And and that's that's why I love doing this because it's they make the show, really. They make the podcast. It's already been like about six months since the last time I visited you. I can't believe that much time has passed, but it was around Christmas, I think. So yeah. maybe maybe there are new and exciting developments on your end too <laughs> with your show. Well you catch we, up on everything because we, we probably can catch haven't, up on yeah, we yes. haven't had a proper catch up since that time. Since that time, yes. Well, I <laughs> optioned the show. It, we renewed the option, so we're good. Oh, yeah, yay! Yeah. We renewed it, so we're good. Um, so we'll see. You know, fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know how it is right. It's like, yeah, you don't want to get too happy, and we're gonna talk about that. Yeah. We don't want to get too happy uh, until <laughs> the check cleared. And even then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got your money, so it's okay, you know. But yeah, even then, you're right. You get canceled, so yeah, it's uh, it's quite a journey to be in this business. Uh, but how how did you get started in film festivals? Because I know you're a producer, and you know you worked in the industry as a network executive. So how the heck did you get into it? Well, how is kicking and screaming? That was how. <laughs> uh, the proper you, way. I did yeah. not. I did not want to do it, and I resisted it. But what happened was, this was a lot of years ago. I worked for a Korean animation studio called mm -hmm. NMS, and they were really trying to break into the Western market. So they had created content for Korea and Southeast Asia, but they really wanted to make a footprint in the U S and outside of Korea. So my boss told me um, that he, he wanted me to enter their animation into film festivals. And I had no idea how to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, I tried to talk him out of it, but, it, unfortunately, that did not work. But actually, fortunately, it, it, it didn't work because then that's how I got into film festivals. And then um, it was really just trial and error through a lot of years that mm -hmm. I learned to navigate the system. And um, I don't have all the answers, of course, but maybe by imparting some of the learnings to your audience, they can avoid some of the pitfalls that I ran into and um, yeah, but it, it's been quite an adventure and so many opportunities have come from film festivals through the years and things that you wouldn't necessarily expect. So um, really like, like what, give us an example, like you submit, right. And then yeah. you get picked uh, and what yeah. happens next? So uh, let's see, one, one example is um, I entered a couple of projects into a, a festival called Script Summit. Shout out to Script Summit and Jeffrey Calhoun, the festival director. I'll have to tell him that he's making an appearance here today. <laughs> um, so I, I had entered a couple of projects in there and um, I guess I made the connection, but maybe it wasn't top of mind, but he mm -hmm. has a side business called We Fix Your Script. And so my I had two different projects that had entered at different times and both of them placed, uh, one, one got second place, so I got a nice certificate and the other one was like a finalist, I think. But anyway, after the second time I had entered, he contacted me and he said, would you be interested in coming on board as one of our staff 
consultants for We Fix Your Script. And, wow. and, and so um, it's wefixyourscript.com and it's a, a group of, I think maybe there's between six and 10 consultants mm -hmm. and we all have different areas of expertise and it's it's a the, there's a menu of services and so people can choose like like if they're working on a script and they're having trouble with um i don't know character development or maybe they want to do a bible a, a, or a lookbook or something like that if they have some specific issue that they want to work on they look through the menu of services they can also get just like general notes on scripts and things like that so he asked me to come on board and then People can look at the menu of services and then also look at the consultants who are available. And um, and then you actually get a 15 minute free consultation to just to talk to Jeffrey, basically, who's, you know, he, he's the grand poobah. And so he'll do like a, a an overall evaluation and advise you on like, OK, I think this consultant would be the best for you. And this is what we advise, like a polish or a you know, I, he rarely recommends a page one rewrite, but if somebody wants it, you know, that that's possible too. So I came on board and um, I've actually gotten a lot of work through him uh, advising people on scripts and um, I've made some great friends just through that. And, and that was totally unexpected that mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's like a, a job really um right I, it is yeah, yeah I, I get paid i get paid to do yeah a consultant so um so that's just one example of a, a, a wonderful opportunity that that came from just you know submitting like i didn't have any prior connections there or anything like that it was just just from just applying and and sending in my materials that's amazing uh what what are your favorite which ones are your favorite film festivals? Well, I've been involved with LA International Schwartz Fest for a number of years. That was actually one of the first ones that I had submitted Korean uh, animation to. And they they chose one of our, our Korean projects to be in LA International Shorts Fest. The festival Great. itself has been around for about 30 years I this might be their 30th anniversary or maybe it's even 31 or 32 I'm not sure but um Robert Arntz uh hi Robert <laughs> shout out to you because he's been really great during the years oh and this is another unexpected opportunity so I've submitted short films to him many short films through the years both um like personal projects and um stuff for my employers so that's mm -hmm. something else you can do it's it's a it's inexpensive marketing, basically. But right. um, Robert, uh, I, I don't know how we got to talking, but that, another thing is it helps if you're a busybody and you like to talk to people and you yeah. just like ask a lot of questions. Some, some people are, you know, some people will enga engage and Robert was one. And so right. he wanted to know about animation and I guess he was, he was intrigued that we were entering something from Korea. And so uh, through the years, he's asked me to do panels for um, not just panels, but like to organize them, like to invite professionals from the animation industry to come. Wow. And uh, and then I moderate the panels and, and so forth. And so um, and then I was very fortunate in 2019 that I had entered a script in the competition and there wasn't any funny business. It was strictly merit only, but I won. <laughs> Yay, <that's awesome. laughs> Yay! My script won the, um, the, the festival. So then my script um, got a staged reading by the Groundlings. Wow, that's, that's huge. Yeah, so the Groundlings ca came and it was, um, it was in North Hollywood where they did the reading. It was a, the, the, the festival where they, sh the part where they showed the movies was the Lemley um, North Hollywood. And then across the mm -hmm. street from that is a, a venue that's like a, a bar and grill type of thing. And they have a nice room in, in a big banquet room in the back. And that's where the, the reading took place. And it was really, really cool. So, so yeah, again, right. like I had no idea that a reading would be taking place. Like that wasn't part that's of 
That's so, amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's great that you you got that far. That's awesome. Um, so let's say I have a script, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to submit it to film festivals, not just because I want to win, but because I also want to network. Like you said, it's a good yeah. way to be seen. Now, there's so many film festivals out there. How do I know which ones are good for my type of script? Sure. So that that's a good question. And um, it's... It, luckily, there are two two outlets that are really good resources. Um, they're actually, I think, the two go go to places for entering scripts into various film festivals. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they're I call them festival aggregators. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. the correct term, but um, one is FilmFreeway.com, and the other one is Coverfly.com. Mm -hmm. And so you go on these websites, it's, it's almost like applying for a job, like if you're applying through a classified ad on Indeed or LinkedIn or wherever, um, you go to the site, you create a, a little a profile for your project. So they, they, it's, it's done in stages, you know, you can upload an image if, if you've created an image for your script or you don't have to do that. And, and maybe you've had some press. Uh, you can upload that, you know, the, the, just to make a nice little profile page for yourself as a writer. And then if you want right. to put, put like a log line about your script mm -hmm. and then then you upload the script and then you have this profile and then there are. There it is. Yes. Filmfreeway.com. There you go. OK, there you go. So let's say I want to submit yeah. something, right? So I sign up first, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you, so you can create like an overall profile for yourself as a filmmaker or a writer or both. You know, you can include as much or as little as you want. I don't think there's really anything that like there's not a required um, amount of stuff. You, yeah. You'll see. And some of it you can put links. Some of it you can upload files and then so you have the you have you make the profile and then you can search they have a, a database of i'm not kidding you film freeway has like ten thousand plus festivals and competitions oh on, my god yeah it is crazy so there you oh, are yeah, there, yes there's, <laughs> there's my profile yay so this is great because you have your profile here with Mm -hmm. all your information so i'm sure a lot of people go industry people go through this maybe i guess right? well Why not? yeah when they're with when, when they're judging for sure the, yeah 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 definitely that and then also um i i like to refer people there because mm -hmm. um often applying for jobs or well, yeah, for me, applying for jobs often involves a writing sample or some, you know, you want to you want to emphasize the fact that you you have experience as a filmmaker or content exactly. creator. So then I can give people the um, film freeway link and then it has all the things that I've submitted through film freeway through the uh, gosh, when did I sign up with film freeway? Probably. I think it was when I was working at Sega. So probably five plus years ago, mm -hmm. five, six years ago. And so I have a number of things that I submitted for Sega on there and some other um, consulting clients as well as my own stuff. So I have a mix of, of uh, video and scripts. And so somebody who's just curious about me can go on there and they can see mm -hmm. the awards that I've won. They can they can actually read the, the writing samples. They can watch the videos if they want. It's like a, a nice portfolio. And mm -hmm. um, and the the site will um, capture a lot of the, the stuff like you don't you don't have to list necessarily all the awards. Once you've we've won something, then the festival goes and enters the information that you, you're the winner. And then mm -hmm. it's kind of like a little icon gets gets pasted onto your profile or something like that. I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you yeah, get yeah. like a little yeah, badge. That's what yeah. it is. It's like a badge. So yeah, so it's a great it's a great marketing tool and it's absolutely free to sign up. So you can go it's like creating yeah. a, pro a, a profile on, you know, like I said, a, a job 
posting site or Craigslist or what have you. And then the time the 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 time spent um, creating the profile is significant. You know, it's kind of it, mm -hmm. it, so expect to spend time making your page look nice. But then it's really just a couple of clicks of buttons to submit after that. And right. that's really that's so valuable. Um, it's so easy, so much and, easier. Yeah. And you can search there. There's a search function, but also there are so many filters that you can use to find the festivals that apply to you. And you can um, you can uh, put favorite certain certain mm -hmm. film uh, film festivals and then get an alert when it, the, the deadline is coming up. So you don't have right. to submit right away. It's not like yeah. a, a panic. And they usually most of the festivals have a a countdown like um they'll have like early bird submissions and that's when it's the cheapest all the yeah. way up to like you know late extremely late you know emergency submission or whatever <laughs> right but um it's always yeah, more expensive yes yeah the rush is, yeah. is always more expensive but um but as far as cost in yeah the I was gonna ask you that. Like, that was my next question like what is the average cost like Anywhere it's, from what to what? Yeah, it's it's all over the place. Uh, really? So so for, it goes from zero. So there yeah. are there are some that are zero, and and also like even if it's um if it's, it's sometimes it's it's free if you're a, like free if you're a student, but then mm -hmm. other you know other people like you might need to upload your student ID or something like that. Or if, if um, sometimes there's like a secret, well, it's not really a secret, but a special place on the site that has deals and um, they, they update it kind of randomly. And so sometimes this festival will have like a, a waiver code for good for like 24 hours. So you can sneak in there and um, you I can- I think Blanche has something to say. Yeah, so Blanche is very familiar with, um, because Blanche oh. was in a film that has a profile on Film Freeway, and we've been in a lot of film festivals with Blanche's film called so Blanche's- She knows a lot. Yes, so yeah. she's got a lot to contribute, actually, and she, Blanche, you want to say something? She's wagging you... her tail. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I want to be on camera, mommy. <laughs> You, you want to come here? Come here. Come say hi to the audience. They want to know about your movie. <laughs> they want to know about Blanche's beach on bus. Blanche, <laughs> look at her. Blanche, oh my God. Look, look. Yeah, we had a wonderful time submitting Blanche's beach on buzz to the festival circuit. And um, nice. wow, that that was such a fantastic experience because that was a short film that I did a few, a few years ago with my nieces and my nieces were ages 10 and seven at the time. So they really, they were the filmmakers. I was the consulting producer right, and, uh, right. and Blanche was the star. I was the consulting yeah. producer and the animal wrangler because Blanche was the star of the, of the movie. Remember that Blanche? Yeah. And, <laughs> um, and then that was so cool because then I discovered this whole parallel universe of student film festivals mm -hmm. and then animal film festivals yeah. um oh wait what wait 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 yeah yeah animal film festival. <laughs> yes. i had no idea so tell us a little bit more about <laughs> that what is what? so <laughs> so our favorite of the animal film festivals Another shout out for for people for our friends at the Canine Film Festival in Miami, and no. and it's so hilarious. Like the their logo, it says Canine Film Festival, but it's almost a, a, an exact copy of the Cannes Film Festival logo. So if you look at it really quickly, you think it oh Cannes Film Festival. Yeah. Canine oh, Film Festival, yeah, yeah. So actually, my niece got a nice award from the Canine Film Festival as nice. um, her recognition was the youngest director. A, so they made a special award for her because she was the youngest director that, that year, and um, they screened the film. We unfortunately we we weren't there to go to the screening. That that's the one. Um, 
one thing it's all it's always so much fun to go to the film festivals but it's not always feasible when do you so, know that your project is ready to be submitted mm, well um well, if you work for a company, usually you'll have a boss who tells you or, yeah. or you, you can ask, you know, mm -hmm. that. so it, although a lot of companies do not see the value of film festivals, they think it's like it doesn't apply to them as a company. Wait, and when so, you say a company, what are you talking? I Because I'm I'm thinking like if I have a script or a film, I submit it. When you say yeah. a company, are you talking about a certain production company that you work for? It could be that, or it could be, I mean, there's so many small businesses that create mm -hmm. content now. Like, uh, okay. um, there, there are film festivals, or I call them film festivals, competitions for everything now, like podcasts, yeah. there's right. um, like advertising and, you know, not, it, it, believe it or not, 10,000 plus festivals is not the sum total of all the contests in the world. It's a lot, it's a lot of them. Wait, 10,000 plus? Yeah, so on film three. That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, so how do you know which one to apply for? Do you do your research? Like, do certain festivals have more like comedies or dramas or, so how, how do you gauge that? How do you um, get knowledge about what so, to submit where? So, um, I, I'll talk specifically about Film Freeway because that's my go-to source. That's your thing, yes. Yeah, I'm not 100% certain about Coverfly. I, I know people who use it, and that's yeah. I think that's 100% for scripts, whereas okay. Film Freeway, it's for short films, it's podcasts, it's, it's for screen content, audio mm -hmm. content, and then it's also for scripts too. So that's why I like it because it's like one story stop shopping but certainly yeah. coverfly is a very similar resource and excellent for just scripts but um you can search this is one thing that i really love about film freeway you can search the various contests with filters so like there's one filter that you can do for oscar qualifying festivals because mm -hmm. um and that what that is um is a festival it's it's usually for short short films although i guess short films and documentaries so um in some of the oscar categories you need to have won at least one of these oscar qualifying film festivals wow. which include like th what what you would think um sundance um, the Cannes Film Festival, so, some mm -hmm. of the really famous ones. But then there yeah. are also ones that are under the radar. And actually, uh, L.A. Shorts International, the one mm. that I've been involved with for a number of years and where my script won, that's an Oscar qualifying film festival for um, animated shorts, live action, um, live action narrative shorts, and documentary shorts. So if you win any of those uh, categories, then your project is automatically shortlisted for the Oscar or long list. I'm not exactly sure because I've never won any of those categories. So I don't know really what happens after you get the big prize, but it's definitely something you can brag about. <laughs> that yeah, that I do know. And, uh, and I brag about it anyway, even though my category for script was not it, well, it's not an Oscar qualifying category, but I still, I mean, a, a festival has to have a certain pedigree to be an Oscar qualifying film festival. Um, they have to be approved by the Academy and so forth. And so, so it just, the fact that you are accepted to one of those is a huge honor. Ooh, so, absolutely. Yeah. So, so you can go to film freeway mm -hmm. and they, they will um, the, across the, the top of the um, the page, the search page, they tell you some of. The, I mean, you can search on on your own, like you can search for keywords, but they will they suggest. So there's like Oscar qualifying um, top rated film festivals. Um, then you could you can search just for like script competitions. Mm -hmm. There's various uh, ways you can search, and then that's how you narrow down. But even narrowing it down will still give you a lot, a lot of choices. So, mm -hmm. 
so um, my uh, criteria mostly is free and cheap. You know, those are those are yeah. <laughs> And Absolutely. Well, you're you're actually on the best comedy teleplay award winner and finalist list of spring 2021 for Pearl of Wisdom. So tell us a little bit more about that experience, submitting and how you got choked. I mean, like you were like ecstatic, I'm sure when you got chosen, <laughs> you were like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that Amazing. that was um, so I. I work for a company called Rain Shine Entertainment, mm -hmm. and it has several subsidiaries, one of which is called Kinsane Entertainment. And Kinsane does kids and family oriented uh, entertainment, so um, animation, mobile games, and so forth. And so, um, especially during COVID, the company was really encouraging to a lot of us to like they wanted us to create stuff <laughs> and they're like okay we're gonna really really we, re we really want to put i mean i i actually handle acquisitions and ip strategy mm -hmm. there um yeah. i wasn't i wasn't so involved with development although i have been at other companies in the past but during covid they were like look you know this is a great time to to have everybody thinking about stuff that will help the company and and all that so um so i pitched something to contain the kids division and they said yeah go ahead and and run with it and mm -hmm. so um so before i even did like character breakdowns or a bible or anything i wrote a sample script because i know for a lot of people that's kind of the end of the process but i like to write scripts early on because it helps me to organize my thoughts and to to shape the characters, if I can, if I can nail their voices and mm -hmm. what what they their dialogue, then I find it so much easier to like retrofit everything yeah, else. Yeah, totally. And their backstories and who they are. Once you know who they are, then you can put them all together and make yeah. them interact and and you know their relationships and how they deal with each other. So yeah, I'm the same way. I do the same thing. Yeah. And it it, it was helpful. This was a it, it's a kids project so it's mm -hmm. it's intended for animation and it's about kids in middle school so i and i i thought it was really important to have like these very distinct personalities right. and 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 voices so so anyway that's what i did so um during the development process i was working with one of my colleagues who's her name's indron hi indrani indrani palai she's back in mumbai in the home office of the company is based in india Okay. And so um, I, I told Indrani, hey, do you have any objection to me entering the script into some festivals and contests just to see what happens? Because a lot of times you'll get feedback from the, the contest. That's right. I, I have. Yes. And you, I think you have to pay for it, too. Sometimes it's Sometimes included. It's, in the, it's, it's included. included. Yeah. yeah, it's included in the like. For instance, um, with so Pearl, yeah, with Pearl of Wisdom and something else, I submitted it to Kids First Film Festival. Uh, hi, Ranny Levy, <laughs> my friend who runs that film festival. And so that, that as part of your entry fee for that one, you will get a review. You'll get it. Actually, the notes are incredibly detailed, especially yes. for, and and the the submission price is so reasonable. It's like thirty dollars. So oh wow, and yeah. they review it and they give you feedback. Yes, That's amazing. yes. And so um, so yeah. So I was explaining to Andrani because Andrani wasn't so familiar with the the process of submitting for film festivals. So mm -hmm. I said, look, if nothing else, it's just a very cost-effective way to market, you know, just to get the company's name out there because you don't know who's judging these festivals. Some festivals are associated with big companies like, you know, HBO is usually involved with some of the comedy comedy festivals or right. you know, a variety of, they'll, they'll have ju judges who are mm -hmm. somehow on staff or, or consultants or whatever for, for larger companies. So I said, it might be worthwhile just to see what happens, see see 
if if the project gets any attention. So she's like, yeah, okay. I, I don't think there was very much expectation. Um, <laughs> I think, I mean, not that, not that she didn't like it or my other colleagues didn't like it, but they were just, they'd never been part of that process before. And they were just like, oh, okay. If you want to take the time and do it, and if you want to spend your money, go, go ahead. So I did, and oh my gosh, it, it was like the best feedback that I've ever gotten for for any of my submissions. Like I tried to pick stuff that was a. Um, let's see, here here here's my my uh, very <coughs> my algorithm of submissions is based on how much it costs. Um, do I know anybody affiliated with the film festival? Have I? been a part of this film festival before do i how how likely am i to mm -hmm. to get in this festival so if i'm gonna spend money then i want to be pretty sure that at least someone will read my submission mm -hmm. or watch my film and um I, I haven't ever had an experience where i i thought somebody ignored my submission but i have heard stories I don't, I don't think they do i don't think they do but like do you think that knowing somebody can you like email them or let them know that you submitted and do you well, think that helps you? I think it, it, it helps in certain situations. Um, for example, okay, this is a funny story. Um, I submitted something for a previous company that I worked with. I worked with a, a Japanese animation and video game company called level five. And yeah. so I submitted our, um, we, ha we had some animation, so I uploaded that, and I was submitting that into festivals, and then I was also submitting a Bible that was really beautiful, the art, and, and I had worked on the text along with other colleagues. And so <clears throat> I was proud of it, so, so I made profile pages. And so um, we, put every, we put all the materials up there, and our, our profiles, our project profiles were so lovely so i was like oh this is going to catch people's eyes no matter what because the art is like t top of the line nice. and so um unfortunately some fans of the video game so the video game had already come out in japan it hadn't come out in the u.s or any other territories yet but this company level five has a pretty strong fan base like people know the games they have and and the tv shows associated with the games Yokai Watch is one of their um, properties. So uh, even though my profile, these profile pages were private, somehow fans who are looking for stuff like that hacked into the film freeway site and they wow. found, and they started posting it online and it went viral. They're like, Snack World is coming to the US and because it's in English, because you know, it was only in Japan, so they figured, oh, here's art and text, and everything's been localized to English, so that means the game's going to come out here, and it, it got out of hand, and so then Nintendo got involved, because the game was going to be coming out through yeah. Nintendo, and so they were like, wait, you know, you guys are under NDA, and we don't want people to know about the game yet, and all this, right. so we had to pull everything down because we could we couldn't stop it from going viral it, it did and uh i got in some trouble for that but it really wasn't my fault i mean i didn't tell anybody i, I was just submitting it to the contest and festivals yeah. i can't help that you know if it, they have, was, i mean it, that's not your fault that's not my fault but anyway so we we had to pull everything down because it was just too much of a security risk yeah, and, risk and then nintendo risk. got upset with the bottom line so nobody oh. wants to make nintendo upset no. <laughs> <laughs> so we pulled everything down and so then um i had submitted to some festivals where i had already participated and one of them was la shorts international film festival and so robert arnst the, the, the such a, a gentleman and a wonderful person he contacted me he's like Marlene, I know you submitted something, but my team is trying to access your videos and it's saying that like th there's an error message, your stuff isn't there anymore. And Ooh. so like what what happened? So yeah. he he wouldn't have done that if he didn't know me. And so I explained the situation. I was like, "Look, this security breach and whatever." And he's like, "Well, can I can I see it anyway? Can you just send me the video file?" 
on your own. And, I, and, and then, you know, we'll keep it really hush hush. And so I said, okay, so I shared the file privately, you know, through an FTP site and we ended up getting accepted into the, yeah. the festival. Good. And so, so I thought I was so disappointed at first because I thought oh, all the work to create the profiles and whatnot, and this is good, this was a big waste of time and blah blah blah. But then I had made that relationship, and mm. um, you know, sometimes it's a it's a it's like a, a building a, a you know you're you're building relationships, you're networking, but yeah. with every festival, you're you don't know who's who's discovering you and how that's going to manifest through the years so so the project that we had talked about a few minutes ago pearl of wisdom is on the festival circuit now and next week it will have a staged reading at the austin comedy film festival Mm -hmm. and so i'm just going to mention a couple of the participants of the reading because they are a excellent actors. We had a, um, I, I got to oversee the rehearsal that they had on zoom this week. So, and they're, they're volunteering their time and I just love this festival. So first, thank you to Michael Thayer, who's the festival director. And then the actors are Bara Kim, Chase Yee, Mandy Smith and Topaz McGarrigal. So they they're all grown ups who will be playing middle schoolers in this stage <laughs> three. So uh, so I was fortunate to be picked as a finalist. And um, if you're in the Austin area and you want to go to the reading, you can buy tickets on Eventbrite. And um, and then yeah, so that's the one, that's what I'm really excited about now. And then there are some other film festivals where. Pearl of Wisdom is competing. And um, this is for the Austin Film Festival, right? Yes. Because you were, I think I forgot to say that. You're on the Best Comedy Teleplay Award winner and finalist list of the Austin Film Festival, which is one of the most prestigious film festivals, right? So this yeah. is this is the Austin Comedy Film Festival. There is an Austin Film Festival that I think... Michael, the same guy, is is part. Of, I, he runs a number of film festivals. Portland. Um, yeah. He does one in Atlanta, but this is specifically for comedy. So um, there are like three festivals running concurrently. I'm not exactly sure of all the ins and outs of it because it's a, there's a lot of stuff going on in Austin next week. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, and so there might be a loose association with the. Austin Film Festival as like a banner, but this one, this part of it is um, the the comedy, Austin Comedy Film Festival. And then yeah. they also do one called um, Austin After Dark Film Festival. And oh, then nice. Austin, what is it called? The other one, I don't know. You, you can go to fest, festival, uh, filmfestivalcircuit.com or you can search Austin Comedy Film Festival and then all of Michael Fair's various endeavors will come up and he's like i mean this is his life is film festivals so yeah. um but yeah there's um there's a lot going on so yeah. so i'm very yeah. really excited about that yeah and another thing i'm super curious about is you were a panelist on comic con in san diego that is freaking huge <laughs> like oh my god okay so i know that you're an animation person and a cosplay and a like you do all the cosplay <laughs> stuff. You love that. I know you love that. <laughs> I'll wear a costume for anything. Yes. Oh that my is, God. That I is true. So that how is- did you get the gig? I mean, I, I know you're amazing, but I, how the <laughs> hell? I mean, that's like huge. Yeah. Well, um, I am a huge fan and uh, uh, not just a fan, but like a, well, a busybody, as I mentioned before, but like I love to find like the sneaky back door, but like legit. I'm not like yeah. the college admission scandal. I and and look, it's always better to be asked to get in something legitimately yeah. with an invitation or whatever. That is the best. But then, that. when that doesn't work, you need to try something else, or else you know, then you you just resign yourself to not doing certain things. Yeah. And so, um, so I 
think, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how my, it turns out, okay, what happened was a friend of mine um, became in charge of this new division of Comic-Con focused on VR and um, AR. So like virtual reality uh, mm -hmm. or, or, or yeah, uh, augmented reality, um, video games. And it was, it's an official part of Comic-Con, but it's, it's held not in the main San Diego Convention Center. It's held in one of the satellite locations. So San Diego Comic-Con in a normal year, a non-COVID year, takes over the entirety of downtown San Diego. So, so my friend, Mark Murphy, he mm -hmm. was fortunate enough to be in, I, I, I know he's done a lot of work in animation and video games. I'm not exactly sure how he, I think he planned some kind of smaller event at a previous Comic-Con and it went really well. And they asked him, look, you know, we want, because VR and gaming is so big, we would love to really expand our presence in this area. And so um, me being a busybody, I'm always posting what I'm doing with work and what have you yeah. online in hopes that a sneaky opportunity will fall into my lap, something that yeah. I never intended. And that's what happened. Yeah, like LinkedIn, you you put like our show, like when we did last time, the podcast, and mm -hmm. tell the audience who like reposted it. Oh, Jeffrey Reddick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, yes of course. Hi, how Jeffrey. Freaking, I know. <laughs> how awesome is that? He, see, that's the thing about you. I love about you. It's like, we're all about relationships. You network your ass off. I mean, especially LinkedIn. I, I don't know. I'm a maniac that. on LinkedIn, for sure. Yeah, you're crazy on LinkedIn. I see all your <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, you got me hooked back. I have like 8,000 connections and I'm not using them. How stupid is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have 8,000. Yeah, I'm a, that's I'm a amazing. whore. Yeah, that's wow. a lot, right? That is a lot. That's, yeah, that's what I thought. You're a micro influencer. But, you know, the fact oh that gosh. he reposted because you posted, that tells you, like, how do you know Jeffrey? Oh, Jeffrey and I go way back. Okay. But we're act well, we have a mutual friend, Daniel Hefner who you've met, you've had Thanksgiving dinner at my place and Daniel has been, Daniel was here. He's from yeah. Australia. He lives in New York now. So Daniel is the the link between Jeffrey and me. So I we met okay. through Daniel years ago, but I'm actually working with Jeffrey. So Jeffrey Reddick is the creator of the Final Destination Thank franchise. You. Yes. And he's, he not only is he an incredible writer but he is a personality in his own right so he has okay. he's kind of like the joss whedon of horror i mean pe people know him because final destination is such an iconic franchise and yeah. he's he's been very generous with his time through the years doing a lot of like fan the fan conventions and you know he's very accessible to the fans and very kind and and sweet and talkative and knowledgeable and so um so i am very fortunate in that the company that i'm working with right now R range hine and kinsane we were able to hire jeffrey as a writer and i've tried to hire jeffrey on projects through the years that just fell through for a number of reasons just because this is a weird business and things fall through for random reasons but totally. this is going this is happening young mm -hmm. captain nemo it's a book series and we hired jeffrey to adapt the books it's not horror but jeffrey is actually very versatile in his talent and so yeah. so i'm working with him right now on that and some other stuff so so we're in contact a lot and Mm -hmm. So I guess he's, he, he, God bless he him. He posted the whole thing. So yeah, going yeah. Back, that was my ADHD, like going all over the place. Going back to like how you got to Comic-Con. Tell us, yeah. like, what was the panel about? What so was yeah, so it was all through Mark Murphy, okay? okay. So we're giving credit to Mark Murphy, a, a, a wonderful human being. And so at the time I was working for Sega and uh, I was all Sonic all the time. And so uh, do you think that... Sega, by way of Sonic, would want to participate in the AR, VR component of Comic-Con. And I said, well, I can find out. Um, and actually, this was 2017. And 
we weren't really planning to do anything big for that Comic Con because the year prior was Sonic's 25th birthday, and we did a big blowout for that. And that just like we needed a year or more to rest <laughs> from that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so at first the answer was no, we're not going to do anything for Comic Con 2017. But then Mark really wanted Sega to participate, so he kept offering us these unbelievable deals, like free booth space and converting all of our um, Sonic Boom episodes into a, a, a large screen format so that they could mm -hmm. screen them on a dome. And like, I mean, all this stuff that like, the free stuff that we had thrown at us was out of control. So of yeah. course my bosses were like, well, maybe we could do that. So we ended up having a big to do. We did a Sonic music concert at Comic-Con that year. I mean, it was crazy how much stuff we did. We did more for the year after Sonic's 25th birthday than we did in the year of his birthday. Wow. So, so, um, so then, so I was already going to be there and I was like the point person for all this stuff going on. So then Mark was like, well, we have this other panel that I'm putting together and it's for, it's called world builders. It's a world builders panel. And I'm going to have a variety of people on the panel to talk about how you, how you create franchises and and it's so it's not going to be specific oh. to one one franchise like a lot of the comic-con panels like it's just about x-men or it's just mm -hmm. about uh, right this was more time. of a generic generic kind of topic yeah it's like how does something become a franchise a big franchise so he's like do you want to be on the panel so i was like of course and i was on the panel with like somebody from lucas uh, actually, I think there were two people from Lucas on the panel. There was somebody who was like part of the, the um, part of Oculus, the Oculus uh, um, the gaming uh, VR technology. Yeah. Um, there were there were a bunch of other like somebody from um, oh gosh, what company was she from? Not EA. Fooey, I can't even remember. <laughs> but it was a lot of big important people. Let's just yeah. say that. And yeah. then there I was <laughs> with, with Sonic. So I was like, I well, hopefully, hopefully I'll have something meaningful to contribute. So I thought the least I could do is just wear a Sonic shirt and maybe people that will tickle people. So, <laughs> yeah. so I was the only one wearing Sonic. I was wearing all, I was kind of decked out in Sonic. I might've had my Sonic mini skirt on and various other things. Always an opportunity to show off the licensed goods. Totally. And, um, yeah, and then there was a, a, a really great moderator, and she just, she would, it was an hour-long panel, and it was, it was an official Comic-Con panel, but it wasn't in the convention center, which, to tell you the what truth, was a blessing, because that convention center is- It's a mess, right? It's I've a, not been there, but it's probably a claustrophobic. It's really, it's really- it's overwhelming. So they yeah. so they do a lot of the um, panels and events outside the convention center. They just rent, where you know, venues that are happen to be available. And so it was at um, a little theater. I guess it's just like a theater where plays and concerts or whatever are performed, and they rented it out for Comic Con. So we had the official background and all this, but it wasn't like hordes and crowds of people like nobody camped out camped out <laughs> to right. see us out, right well people do that for like yeah. marvel panels and you know harry potter and stuff unfortunately well actually i say fortunately but i guess some, maybe some of the other panelists were disappointed that we didn't have people camping out but um but at least we could we could get to the venue right. um yeah i mean i had there was an experience, and it was at that very same Comic Con where we did um, we did a concert, a Sonic music concert, like two days prior, and one of my colleagues was not able to get to the concert because he he didn't he didn't time it right for when he was yeah. coming from his hotel. I mean, he didn't think he needed like two hours to get to the the hotel <laughs> he just didn't think so and then yeah. <clears throat> excuse me he could not physically get to the venue because it it was just a crush of people 
And so we were, we were so worried. We thought maybe he was kidnapped or something because, you know, he was a very important part of the behind the scenes. Yeah. We just had to do the concert. I think he, he finally got there like the last few minutes of the concert, but he just, his Uber would only take him to a certain point in the city because they couldn't get through. So they had to drop him off like two miles from the convention center. So he had to walk? Or run in his oh case. Because, right. Oh my God. And he just God. couldn't make it. It was it, just a wall to wall. It was insanity. So like, yeah, no, I mean, but that's the kind of craziness that you run into there. Like a car can only get to a certain point and then it's just too many people and streets are blocked. And crazy. so they were like, I'm sorry, we have to let you off here. And he was just running through the streets yeah. of San Diego. Wow. That's insane. So yeah. But so well, that, one, that was my, my comic, San Diego Comic-Con story experience. of being on well, the panel, yeah. We're, we're almost at an hour, so this is our last question from Nate. Uh, Marlene, who is your favorite character to cosplay as? Well, I have this amazing costume that I got from when I was working at Level 5. Yeah. And a as you might expect... When you work for a cool company like Level 5 or Sega, you get free stuff and free, free stuff from the licensees because often they'll send you product samples mm -hmm. before something goes into the stores. Somebody needs to look at it and approve it. And then what happens to those samples? The employees take them home. So, um, mm. so I got this amazing, so cute. It's a little dress and a hat. And um, oh, I got the wig. The wig was separate, but I did get the wig from Level Five, and it's um, a costume of it's Jabanyan from Yokai Watch, who's like the main the main yokai of Yokai Watch. And so, but it's it's a real like girly interpretation of Jabanyan. So it's a little dress. I mean, Jabanyan is a male orange cat with two tails. I yeah. mean, not two tails. <laughs> Do you have two? Okay, I'm getting him confused with tails from Sonic. He does have two tails. I have no idea. You can and, just anyway, anyway, I have no sorry. Clue. I'm apologizing to any fans out there who 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 know the mythology of all the various places where I've worked. Clearly, these things do not stick with me because my brain is too full of them. But the the point being is that this is an awesome costume, and I love it. And um, even though I don't work for Level Five anymore, I do like to wear my Jabanyan little dress. The, it, it has the little tails sticking out of it. It's a ha an orange hat. Oh, and then I have a really cool cape that also came from Level Five that I accessorize with that, and I wear a, 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 bl a blue wig just because the blue looks really nice with the orange. Yeah, um, that's my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite. Maybe post a picture on the comments so we can we can see it. Oh, um, like later, later after we're later. done. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here's Definitely. Howard loving the show, Marlene and Grace. Lots of amazing insight. Thank you, Howard. Marlene, any thoughts on Sundance and TIFF in Toronto? Oh, yeah. So those are very big, prestigious film festivals that I have not been a part of either one of those. So that's that's on my bucket list for sure. Um, and I think I have... I have submitted to Sundance before, and I probably have submitted to Toronto too. So I think I've been turned down by those festivals. Um, yes. Some of the bigger festivals like Sundance, I don't think that they you can apply through Film Freeway. I believe Sundance is one mm -hmm. of the exceptions where you have to go on their website, download their application and jump yeah. through all those hoops. I could be wrong, but, um, but, I, I have submitted there. I haven't ever gotten accepted. And that, you know, it does, it does take an emotional commitment and, and um, it does take your personal resources to submit. Plus it costs money. And so yeah. I think when I get rejected, it takes the wind out of my sails and it makes me not necessarily want to submit there again. And so, well, you so, have to keep I guess, right? I mean, yeah, but I'll except I didn't with <laughs> Sundance. So I gave I gave up after. A I think I tried a couple of times for various employers, and then yeah. I was just like, "Those look, I would love to be in Sundance and and Toronto. Um, those are fantastic film festivals." But yeah. I feel like, well, I, I haven't been there yet. 
nobody knows me. So it's more like a shot mm -hmm. in the dark for, for my stuff to even yeah. break through and get yeah. rep. Because I, I, I can't prove this, but I have a feeling that a lot of times if they get like 10,000 submissions, mm -hmm. I don't know how they would possibly be able to review but, yeah. everything. And so some just have to get lost in the shuffle like, and i yeah. figured that would be mine so um so while i love and respect both of the both of those festivals i kind of get, gave up on them and i ha i haven't i haven't pursued them but they're definitely they're worth pursuing if you've got a yeah. you know more hearty constitution than myself you know if you can take take the rejection take the rejection absolutely so here's um Nate, Marlene Sharp, has anyone ever told you look that the assistant principal McGee from the film Pitching Tents on Amazon Prime? Oh my God, so Ren, oh, my name. <laughs> that's because that's because I am. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, busted. busted. You got me. Busted. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone <laughs> for uh, your wonderful questions. Thank you, Marlene, for all the incredible knowledge and the stories and the and the fun stuff <laughs> that you shared with us. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank where you, can people Grace. find you? Oh, you're so welcome. Where can people <laughs> find you on social media? Well, LinkedIn for sure. Like I said, yeah, I'm, a, I I'm a maniac on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. My Instagram handle is sharp6250. And I'm on Twitter as DivaMarlene70. And what else? I'm on Film Freeway. It's uh, filmfreeway.com slash Marlene Sharp. You can find me there. Yeah. And also my website uh, for my company, Pink Poodle Productions, just www.pinkpoodleproductions.com and awesome well thank you it. so much marlene mm -hmm. and everybody follow her thank you, you can ask her questions and she's amazing she's a very generous person too so very unusual thank you <laughs> very unusual in this industry so i <laughs> really appreciate it <laughs> exactly all right thank, thank you, you everyone and i'll see you guys next sunday at seven Bye. Bye.